hello ladies and gentlemen today we're gonna take a look at miracles from heaven a movie that i honestly didn't really have any intention of seeing but i scored a free pass to an advanced screening and i figured hey it's free why not this movie is based on a true story of a little girl with some rare gastrointestinal disorder that basically cuts off the nerve signals going from her stomach to her small intestine. So when the small intestine receives food from the stomach, it doesn't know what to do with it, and it just sits there. Obviously, if your body can't process food correctly, you're not going to live a good life. And her parents are struggling to find treatment for her and also to pay for said treatment because it ain't cheap and they were already living paycheck to paycheck as is. And she's in constant pain and misery and has to be fed through a tube and it's a horrible life that no one should have to go through, especially a child. But then one day she falls out of a tree and hits her head, apparently hitting it in just the right position and this somehow hits her body's reset switch, for lack of a better term, and suddenly her stomach and intestines start working properly, and she's cured. Brothers and sisters, can I get a hallelujah? I said, can I get a hallelujah? Yeah, if that didn't clue you in, this is a Christian faith-based film. Because it's a faith-based film, and those have a tendency to, you know, suck, and because the trailer pretty much spoiled the entire thing, I was not expecting much from this. The only reason I saw this movie in the first place is because it was free. If I had to pay money for this, I wouldn't have bothered. But I saw it in any case, and the people running the screening told the audience before the movie started, Sony would like very much for you to go online and post a review on your website of choice. So that's what I'm doing, Sony. Doing just what you asked. But you may not like what I have to say. For what it's worth, the movie wasn't nearly as bad as I expected it to be, but it's still pretty bad. Honestly, I think the perfect tagline for this movie would be, come see a little girl suffer for two hours. Because that's pretty much what it is. From the moment she starts experiencing the symptoms of this rare disorder early on in the movie, up until the moment when she finally falls out of the damn tree, that's really all that goes on. She's just in constant pain and her family is at least mentally and emotionally suffering right along with her. And it's just a whole lot of misery and not much else. And it's kind of hard to sit through, honestly. Really, I'm just sitting there wondering how long they can possibly keep this up until she finally falls out of the damn tree and gets cured already. The sad thing is the story itself really isn't all that bad. Honestly, a story of someone who is suffering through this rare condition that is slowly killing them. I mean, if your body can't process food, eventually you're gonna die. There's no way around that. And then one day she falls and hits her head just right and poof, she's cured. Even if you don't believe in any divine intervention that's causing this, that is fascinating stuff. It really is. There's just not enough here to fill a full movie. There's a reason why they were able to summarize the entire plot in a two and a half minute trailer. This is honestly something that would probably be better served as a segment on 60 Minutes or something. There's just not enough material here for a two hour movie. If there's anything I learned from this movie, it's that the Dallas-Fort Worth area apparently has some of the most incompetent doctors walking God's green earth. Because that's pretty much all the first half hour is. It's just a bunch of doctors almost comically misdiagnosing this little girl's condition. Like, from lactose intolerance to acid reflux, like... How does this even happen? And I don't know how much of this actually is true. I don't know enough about the real story behind this family to know how close this is to what really happened, but man, the doctors in Texas cannot be happy about this because it makes them look pretty bad. John Carroll Lynch plays the church pastor in this movie and he is criminally unfunny. The doctor that this family eventually finds who offers some form of effective treatment for this girl is played by Eugenio Derbez, who you might remember from Jack and Jill. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Remember that guy? Yeah, he's in here. He's not nearly as bad as he is in Jack and Jill. I will give him that, but not all that great either. And this is probably the whitest movie I've seen since Gods of Egypt. 
But I will say at least this movie takes place in Texas, where there actually are quite a few white people, so I'll give it that. Although, I imagine there are quite a few people of Mexican descent in Texas as well, and yet the only Mexican in this movie lives in Boston. Go figure. And the directing in this movie got really weird at times. It's... Not terribly well done. There's one moment in particular where, while this girl is getting treatment at a children's hospital in Boston, her family surprises her with an impromptu visit, and after they come into her room, the camera cuts to a shot from outside the hospital room, just looking in through the door, and then it slowly pans to the right over to this emergency exit door at the end of the hall, and... It's focusing on this door for some reason, and I'm wondering, is someone important supposed to walk through this door or something? And then all of a sudden, it just cuts to the next scene. What? It's like the director couldn't figure out how to end the scene, so it just kind of stopped. I'm not really sure how else to explain it. It's just really weird. And after the girl falls out of the tree and hits her head, she naturally loses consciousness for a little while, and... While she's unconscious, she apparently takes a little trip up to heaven, and apparently, according to this movie, heaven is where bad special effects go to die. At first, she's walking on this badly photoshopped nature trail, and she comes across this lake with a cave on the other end of the lake that has clearly been superimposed into the shot badly. I mean, Sharknado had better effects than this. I'm not kidding. As far as the acting, I suppose it was okay. Uh, Jennifer Garner kind of has to carry most of the weight here since most of the story focuses on her and her daughter. And bless her heart, she tried. She really did, but no one could save this movie. Even Jesus could not save this movie. He may save your soul, but he ain't gonna save this movie. Now, I will give this movie credit in one area. For a faith-based film, I was kind of surprised that it does not seem to be all that shy about admitting that sometimes certain people of the faith can be dicks. There's a moment in this movie where a few people from the church that uh, Jennifer Garner and her family attend politely, as politely as you possibly can do something like this, suggest that Maybe there's a reason why her daughter is suffering so much. Maybe it's a form of punishment for some sin that you have committed or something your husband did, or maybe it's something that your daughter did. Yeah, they actually come out and say this, and to the movie's credit, it does make it quite clear that these people are fuck weasels and their position is completely wrong. And I'm certainly glad they did that because I'm sure there are some religious movies out there that would take the opposite approach. But fortunately, the people behind this have some sense of decency behind them. So thank you for that. I'm not going to thank this movie for anything else, but I will thank it for that. So final verdict... It's probably better than most religious movies out there, which really isn't saying all that much, but it's still not all that great. And like I said, its biggest problem is there's just not enough material in the story for a two-hour movie. And even if you're the target audience for this movie, I don't think there's enough here that would make this worth paying money to see it in theaters. At most... I could recommend it as a rental, but that is as far as I will go. Even then, I think you're better off saving your money. And that is all I have to say about Miracles from Heaven, and I certainly hope the next movie I see is better than this. So until next time, take care.